Hello and welcome to Talk Trillium, Partnering for Patients. I'm Patty Cochran, Senior Vice President and Chief Innovation Officer at Trillium Health Partners, which includes the Credit Valley Hospital, the Mississauga Hospital, and the Queensway Health Centre. I'll be your host as we take a look at how our hospital is working to create a new kind of healthcare for a healthier community. Today, I'm very delighted to welcome our guests as we speak about our uh, biggest and most dedicated community partners are volunteers at Trillium Health Partners. So I'd like to welcome Deb Folks. She's our Director of Volunteer Services and alongside her two long-standing volunteers with our organization, June Bennett and Manny Bernardo. As we go through this show, we're going to talk about a few fast facts. So I'm going to start with the first fast fact about volunteers. Uh, there are over 2,000 volunteers working across the three sites of Trillium Health Partners. Deb, is that correct? That is absolutely correct. We have some very dedicated volunteers. Our community is a very giving community. So what kind of people would we find um, volunteering within our organization? Well, if you want to break it down, about 45% of our volunteers make up our high school and our university students, and about 55% are our adults. Um, we have adults uh, mid-50s on, and then we have a large population of, of our seniors who are coming to volunteer to fill in their time and to socialize and to give back to the community. So right across all ages, and I think joining us today will be both the young and the middle-aged and the youthful elder. Um, so maybe I'm going to ask Manny, why did you become a volunteer? Well, um, years ago my sister got uh, very, very ill and she was having a, uh, a real tough time. And she spent four months in the, uh, in the hospital at, uh, the, uh, at the Credit Valley site. And um, we thought we were going to lose her, but um, the doctors and the nurses at the uh, ICU actually did a real good job and brought her back. and. She's now living and having a real good life, and I thank the Lord and Credit Valley for her uh, for her life. So I just decided to I have to give back. My both my kids are uh, were born at Credit Valley. Um, I've gone through a few things, uh, heart attacks and stuff like that, and uh, they've been very good. And I just decided that you know I have to give back and and wanted to give back. And Credit Valley seemed like the most logical choice for me. So you yourself, you've had a family member who was very ill, and it sounds like you brushed over the fact that you yourself had a heart attack. Yes, yes. This allows you to give back a little bit. Yes. Great. It is. And June, why did you uh, volunteer? I've always wanted to volunteer at Credit Valley. I have no idea why Credit Valley, but I went out and was built. Um, I just had a very strong feeling that I wanted to, to volunteer there. And I met Deb, and Deb talked me into Sip and Go, and She's been fantastic and very supportive of anything that we've done with Sip and Go. Great. So yeah. Sip and Go. Tell me a little bit more about Sip and Go. <laughs> it sounds like a very intriguing type of program. Yes, actually, we, um, we June and I, we, our team basically, we see about, about 200 people mm -hmm. throughout the hospital, on average, sometimes more, sometimes less. Uh, we, we deliver water to, uh, to the patients. We get lists from the uh, from the, from the nurses, and we create the uh, put the water together and deliver it to them. And sometimes we have some conversations with them, and uh, you know, some little errands here and there. Uh, we uh, we've met quite a few interesting people. There's been co co quite a few uh, interesting times. <laughs> uh, I can say that we uh, we've met interesting people, and. Uh, we, uh, we, we, it's not just about the water, as, as June says, and we <laughs> try to tell our, our, uh, our fellow students with us, it's not just about the water, it's also smiling and going in and sometimes just, uh, just being there for certain people. Uh, because, you know, the hospital is a kind of a scary place, especially if you don't know the language. And, uh, and we, you know, they kind of see a, a friendly face, a smiling face, and, uh, and you're offering water too and they feel more comfortable, at least in my mind. So do you two volunteer together? It yes. sounds like you have yeah. a, <coughs> and yeah. did you know each other before you started volunteering? No, no. Uh, like June, Deb, I met uh, Deb once and uh, we went through an interview and she just went, I know what to do with you. She said and that to me also. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> she did. And uh, yeah. she, she put us together and yeah. we started uh, five years ago. Five, six, I think I had but someone, I, but you were. Five, I started with yeah. you five years ago and yep. we, uh, we just clicked. 
Uh, yeah. we, we we're both as crazy as you know, each other, so it so works you're a bit well. crazy. We have to be a little <laughs> crazy, yeah, I think, sometimes. Um, you know, it's good to have someone that is sort of like a, a what do you want to say? Um, the Friend. That's it. <laughs> that wasn't the word, but it's okay. So you also um, get to meet new people and uh, develop a... We've been just so thrilled to have um, uh, students working with us. They're so bright, they're so sharp, and lots of fun. And we figured that Sip and Go was an excellent um, stepping off point for them if they're going into being a nurse, being a doctor. Um, yeah, going into their universities any, any and medical, studying yeah, in the medical area. field. It certainly gives yeah. them... Um, well, they get first-hand experience because yes. hospitals are not always nice and sweet and lovely. I That's mean, right. you go into hospital rooms and uh, it's not always nice what you do see, but the benefits outweigh the, the bad part. And I've heard from patients that they love seeing a smiling face and it really makes them feel yeah. positive. Yes, even the palliative care people. Um, we've, we've taken these crazy outfits that we wear for various occasions. So show and, us uh, a little bit about oh, your crazy outfits. you can outfits. wear that. <laughs> yeah. Well, for Easter, we uh, we decided to dress up Oh, funny. Manny. Yeah, <laughs> I, uh, June kind of convinced well me to it. do that, but yeah. I, I... You can I, make anyone do anything. Oh, uh, I can. Well, no, she, husband, she right? wanted me to wear the tail, and, and I said, no. <laughs> my, no, no my lovely... For St. Patrick's Day? Yeah. Oh, I had a nurse chase me down to find out where I got it because she was just thrilled that she so wanted one So you try and well. make it fun for them and offer yes. a little well, bit? Yes. Yeah. You know, we, we kind of, uh, for, for Easter, we kind of discussed it and we wanted oh, right. to put some um, something on the on the drinking cups. Uh, oh. We were going so to go with the little, little stickers. We were going to put some little religious things, but then we thought, well, wait a minute, not everybody is religious because June and I are very spiritual. Uh, so we decided to give kind of like a spring kind of feel. So we started every putting stickers on the mm -hmm. on the cups. We got great response from the patients. A lot of smiles and a lot of thank yous. I think so, a lot of thank yous from the staff. When you went on to the units, the oh staff yeah. were just as excited to see That's you all yeah. up. One lady yeah. said, I don't want water today. And I said, oh, you're not going to get a sticker, right? And she went, what? What do you mean I'm not getting a sticker? So we got her a glass and put her sticker on. She's, okay, I'll take that now. Yeah. <laughs> so Deb, tell me about the benefits of sip and go <laughs> from a patient's perspective. Because the volunteers play a great role in, in providing the water. But tell us about the other benefits that this program provides. So this program was created a while ago um, from one of our RP, uh, RNs, uh, geriatric, and they realize a lot of times when our seniors are in the hospital, they get very dehydrated and ultimately then confused. So in order to keep our patient hydrated, we created a program called Sip and Go. Uh, the object of the Sip and Go program was that the volunteers would leave the glass of water for the patient, and any staff that came into the room would say to the patient, have a sip before I go. And that oh, was how the, that's how the program it. was initiated. I think our patients really love to see our volunteers. We had a youth volunteer a few years ago. We always ask our volunteers to say, is there anything else I can do for you before I leave? Because maybe mm. it's just grab their glasses or put their blanket on or just something little that they can do. And one of our students came in after a shift and I asked her, you know, how was your day? And she said, I had the best day ever. Mm. And I said, why? She said, because I saw Bob he came in and I said, Bob, is there anything I can do before I go? And he said, yes, I want you to give me one of those big smiles of you, yours, because it makes me feel really great. So a smile goes a long way. It mm -hmm. sure yeah, does. Absolutely. And so can you tell me a fast fact? How many hours? I've heard it's a large number of hours that volunteers actually contribute. I can. I have a few fast facts we can talk about. <laughs> one of them I'm uh, telling you about, we had, um, I'll give you a fast fact about our sip and go. Because if our sip and go volunteers visited each inpatient during the year, they would have provided water to 61,054 patients. Wow. That's amazing. That's about right. We That's can do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's a very busy program, and we it have it out across both the Mississauga Hospital site and the Credit Valley site. So maybe just quickly, Manny and June, uh, what's the best experience or the best benefit that you have from volunteering within the organization? Personally, um, when I leave the hospital, I don't have a problem in the world. We uh, we tend to trivialize and 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 whine over things that um, that really we don't need to. We you know you see these patients and what they go through. Uh, we end our shift with a with a lovely lady, 
and we purposely end our shift with this lady. Um, and uh, she doesn't have a care in the world, and she's in the hospital uh, most of her life. Mm -hmm. And uh, we see this, mm -hmm. and I say, no, you know, uh, we don't. I, the, the benefit for me is I don't have anything to worry about. I don't have anything to complain about. I get to leave the hospital. I get to go home. I get to see my family and my friends. And uh, and that every Tuesday when we volunteer, I think that's my biggest benefit is I can go home and and enjoy my life. And unfortunately, some people are in the hospital and some people don't leave the hospital. But I have nothing to complain about. That's great. June? He pretty much said what I was going to say, actually. Excuse me. <coughs> um, sometimes there's happy things or sad things that happen in the hospital, but it's an opportunity for us to be there and maybe make a difference, hopefully make a difference yes. in people's lives, and uh, that's what I, I feel. I think I'm getting more from um, volunteering than actually I'm giving, and I think that's why I, I appreciate it. Yes. I just want to say thank you for sharing your own personal stories and coming to share them with us and to the over 2,000 volunteers at Trillium Health Partners for contributing so much to the organization because there isn't anything that we could do without you. So, so really our big, big thanks to you and I just want to ask our viewers to uh, stay tuned because we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about volunteering within Trillium Health Partners. So stay tuned. I'm your host, Patty Cochran, and welcome back to Talk Trillium. Today we've been talking about our amazing volunteer program, and here with me is Deb Folks, but I'd like to introduce two more volunteers. We have Vicki DeRoche Hi and there. her pet dog, Mackie. And so maybe we can get the cameras on Mackie. Mackie's <laughs> just lying very obediently on the ground. Um, so Deb and Vicki, can you tell us a little bit about the pet therapy program? Well, oh, have, look at him. Yeah, he's, <laughs> he's so sweet. And he's so good, too. Yes, isn't he? We have nine pets across the hospital um, that come in and visit our patients. Our patients absolutely love having the pets come visit. Many of them have had former pets, and it really helps to decrease their anxiety just having a pet to pat. Uh, we often get phone calls to our department saying, is there a pet in today? Can we have a pet come visit my family member? Because it will really help her. Vicki, you maybe can talk about what you do for the pet therapy program? Yeah, what we do is we walk throughout the hospitals. Um, Mackie and I are at the Mississauga site and also at the Queensway site. And we basically walk the halls. And if someone sees them, then we go into the rooms or I'll knock on the door, ask if they like dogs. And then we go in. Sometimes they say not so much and they look at him like, but he's a, he looks like a nice dog. So then we'll go in and we'll talk about the dogs and what they do. And a lot of people, as Deb said, they have had animals, they miss them, and it just calms them down. So what kind of benefits do you think the patients feel or have from seeing the pets? It relaxes them. It gives them something different to think about for a couple of minutes, so they're not concentrating on why they're at the hospital. We also visit with the family members and it's just, we go to the family care room where their families are, are having surgery and it just calms them down. So for a couple minutes, you're not thinking about everything while you're stressed. 
you're petting the dog, your blood pressure is going down, and you're just relaxing because it has nothing to do with the hospital. He's not there to take your temperature or to ask you questions. It's just relaxing. I mean, for dog owners, right, we all love our dogs and we all, yeah. when, whenever we come back home, they're wagging their tail and they're always happy yeah. to see us, unlike our human spouses sometimes. <laughs> or our <laughs> Look at him, he's so relaxed. How I can know. you not be relaxed? Just looking at Mackie. That's crazy. <laughs> so Vicki, how did you get started in this? I've been in the pet therapy program since 2001. I had a Rottweiler at that time and the coordinator um, lived around the corner from me. So she kept saying, you have to put your dog in the program. A Rottweiler? A Rottweiler, yes. And she was at the hospital for four years, volunteering there until we lost her. And just a calm, relaxing dog. She didn't quite get the reception that Mackie gets. I'm not <laughs> surprised. <laughs> but a lot of the patients now, or not a lot, but we have had patients that have said to me, like, that's not the dog that you had when I was in the hospital before. And I said, oh, which one? The black one. I said, oh, so that was a while ago. I said, it's, and that was Mandy. And then after we lost her, I started with my neighbor's Wheaton Terrier, got her in the program, and then Mackie came around. So I steal my neighbor's dogs. Ah, so Mackie is not your dog. He's not my dog. He lives around the corner from me, and we have a great working relationship where I get to have him three days a week. They go on holidays. He stays with us and I don't pay for anything. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. And Mackie's tall enough, I, I guess, to reach patients who are in bed. Yes, yeah. And that's the advantage of having a big dog because you can't always put the dog on the bed. With the small dogs, then you can put a blanket down and they can go on the bed. With a big dog, they can just reach over with their hands. We go to ICU and CSICU. Do you really? We, yeah, he doesn't shed. So he can go there. So even in a critical care environment, yes. the dog is welcome. Yeah. yeah. We have small and big dogs at the yeah. hospital. Uh, Daisy is a schnauzer poodle. poodle. Yeah. And we actually have a great Dane, Shana, yeah. who comes as well. So we have all sizes of, of dogs yeah. that come and visit at the hospital. Yeah. And is there any science behind the therapy of pet therapy uh, for patients, Deb? Is there any? There is uh, some research being done to the point where now they're actually extending pet therapy into the universities and colleges. They're finding that the reduction of anxiety is so strong that they're now bringing pets to the colleges just before exams. And they apparently have kids lined up for two to three hours yeah. just to pat a dog, just to relax them before they go into the exam. So there is definitely proof that this is uh, yeah. something that's very therapeutic. You know, I think we're going to go over to a, a question that was raised by one of our staff members at Trillium Health Partners because I'm sure the uh, viewers of this show are probably asking the same question. So let's go and take a look about what she wants to know. Hi, my name's Kelly and I was just wondering how animals are trained for pet therapy here. Okay. I was wondering the same thing. So Vicki, <laughs> how do you train, especially your Rottweiler, like how would you know that the Rottweiler was safe in that environment? There is no training in the program. The dogs all have to go through an evaluation. And it's uh, an hour, hour and a half. And it's scenarios that they have to go through that you would come across in a hospital, nursing home. It's a personality of the dog. They have to agree to be petted. Uh, you can't have a dog that shies away from people. They have to want to be there. They have to be quiet. Last thing you want is a dog racing down the hospital yes. corridors, barking like crazy <laughs> because something has scared them. Right. So we will do testing where we'll drop a bag of empty pop cans. So that would be like an IV pole falling over or a tray. Dogs will react just like people will, but what you don't want is a dog saying, what was that and I'm out of here. So it's just, it's a personality of the dog more than anything. The Rottweiler, we had a four-year-old boy when we got her. So she grew up with a young child and she was so calm, relaxed. Wheaton Terrier, people at the hospital would say, well, she can't be a purebred, she's too quiet. I said, no, you haven't seen her at home. Different dog. They know. They know the environment. They know what's expected of them. And I've said to Deb, even her dog would probably amaze her. My at the dog hospital. would not do well at this. <laughs> Neither would mine at all. 
<laughs> but they might surprise yeah, you. They might. In the right environment. They have a sense, don't they? The dogs they do. have a sense and, and they yeah. know when Mackie's here, Mackie is working. And yeah. he knows he's working. Yes. Yeah. So if one of the viewers was interested in participating in the pet therapy program, is there a process in place, Deb? Uh, how would you go about that? Um, the first step would be to contact St. John's Ambulance and to book an evaluation. Uh. Once, once that evaluation is done, then they would apply online like any other volunteer and let us know that they do have a pet. And part of the process is making sure their shots are up to date, um, showing um, certification of that. Uh, and then we'll interview them and see where the best fit is and if it works in the hospital. St. John's Ambulance is great because they always bring in another person like Vicki who would work with that person yeah. for several visits to ensure that it was a good fit with the hospital. Yeah. Actually, there's one of the volunteers at the hospital that asked me yesterday. She has a dog and she'd love to, she's already volunteering at the hospital and she would like to volunteer with the pet therapy dog program as well. And a lot of people, you know, the dog at home, they love their pet and they think their pet would be a great person to come visit. But really and truly, uh, this program really helps to evaluate it. So we make sure that the pets we're bringing in are safe for the pets and safe for the patients. Now, is there a particular breed of dog that, uh, that make a better pet therapy dog than others? No. No. In the pet therapy dog program in Mississauga, we have every type of breed you can think of. And even at the hospital, there's a Belgian Shepherd. There used to be a, a big, um, we have a Leon Burger in the program, not at the hospital, which is a huge dog. Great Dane's great big. Great Dane's too. big. The, uh, I understand you have a Great Dane yes. that's part of the pet therapy. Yep. How big is that dog? They must oh, be. Oh, she's huge. She makes Mackie look tiny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Does yeah. she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's a big Very dog. Very calm, though. Yes. Very calm. Yeah, and that's the main thing. And like you said before, when you come home, your dog greets you, and your stress level just goes down. And it's the same thing when the dogs come into a patient's room, and they love dogs. It just, they have a smile on their face. I have to say that when our, our volunteers come in with their pets, one of the things we have to really as staff do is remind us to say thank you and hi to the handlers because we're all so <laughs> excited to see the dogs that we forget that Vicky's here as well and we need to say hello to Vicky. How are you today too? Because my staff, all of us in volunteer resources, are just always so excited whenever the dogs are visiting. So yeah. we get a little therapy before they go out on their work. So it's great. Yes, and I notice you're wearing an ID badge, but I also noticed that Maggie. Mackie has Mackie. one Mackie. as well. Yeah. Oh, he has his own hi. hospital ID card and he was even smiling. I don't know if you want to <laughs> zoom in. He was smiling for his picture. Oh, and he was. <laughs> Isn't that the most adorable thing? We don't give him parking privileges though. No parking no. privileges. No. But Mackie does get paid by Tim Hortons. He gets his free Timbit at the end of his shift. <laughs> Is that right? So he, they're ready for him? They're yes. waiting for him? Yeah. And how, how do they feed him? Like you just throw it on the floor? No, no, no. He gives them to me. Ah. Yeah, okay. How did that start that they gave you that? Well, Tim Hortons has always had where you can go through a drive through And if you have a dog in the car, oh, really? you get a free Timbit ah, for the dog. I didn't know that. So at the hospital then, yeah, I guess it was the one manager. Well, that was even before Mackie. That goes back to Mandy. Because, yeah, all the dogs that I've had there have always gotten Timbits. Oh, there's a good fact. So I didn't know that for Tim Hortons. <laughs> I'll have to remind that for my dog. So Tim Hortons did give us a Timbit to give to oh, Ma Mackie. Mackie. Timbit? Do you oh, want a look at Mackie. Look at this. <laughs> What's this? Oh. Is that a Timbit? <laughs> Such a well-behaved dog. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. <laughs> And any fast fact that you want to share with us, Deb, just before fast we fact. break? One of our fast facts for pet therapy is that we have nine pets across the hospital visiting our patients. Uh, if you combine their age, it would be 54 years old. And if you do that in dog years, it's 20,250 <laughs> years old. That's just <laughs> great. <laughs> so thanks for joining us You're and thanks for well. bringing Thank Mackie you. today. Um, okay. It's really an honor and a privilege to have oh, a, a, we're glad to be here. this type of volunteer joining us today. Thank you. So stay tuned for Talk Trillium and we'll be back after a short break.
Welcome back to Talk Trillium, Partnering for Patients. I'm Patty Cochran, your host, and today we've been talking about the volunteer services across the Trillium Health Partner Program. We've been speaking with Deb Folks, our Director of our Volunteer Services, and now we're joined with Catherine Devlin, a volunteer, as well as Ravi Shala. So welcome to our show today. Thank you. I noticed some interesting vests that you're wearing, and uh, maybe Ravi, you've got a lot of buttons on that <laughs> vest. So. Can you share with us a little bit about what those buttons are all about? And I'm not sure if our cameras can actually capture some of those buttons. But I sure can. This one says I speak Hindi, which is one of the Indian languages. And this one says Punjabi. And I can speak that one too, besides English. Wonderful. And I speak a little German also, but I didn't have a button for German, so. Do you really? Yeah, I do, a little bit. Now, Enough. I noticed some other buttons along the side there. Can you explain what those well, buttons are? This one here is volunteers day button that they were given to all the volunteers this one also that's the indian flag by the way oh great <laughs> and, and do you have sorry do you have something that that says how many hours you've contributed to yes i do as a matter of fact this one here says thousand fifteen hundred two thousand all the way up to twenty five hundred hours wow that's significant ravi did you get a button when you did your civic award do you have a button for that um, no, I didn't get a button, but I have a picture with Hazel McCallion, the 10 year civic award, which I got a couple of months ago. Wow. Th so that signifies 10 years of volunteering. Yes. That's great. Now, Catherine, I also noticed that you've got an interesting button. Ask me. Ask me. Um, because I volunteer on the information desk, um, Basically, the button is so that when somebody comes into the hospital, because we're right on the front line, that they can ask me whatever question they wish. And also, when I'm walking around the hospital, if somebody's lost or they need to go somewhere, it gives them the right to ask me, and I hopefully know where they want to go. And does it work? Does oh, yes. Work? Oh, yes. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Lots of people yes, asking. it could be a simple question as to where the closest washroom is, but it's the kind of thing they know they can ask you whatever, which is good. So, Catherine, can you talk to us a little bit more about the different roles you've had as a volunteer? Okay, I've been at the hospital for 14 years. Um, I started in the gift shop as. Um, I also bought for the gift shop as a buyer, um, which I thoroughly enjoyed. So it was in sales, basically. And then a few years ago, I switched to the information desk. And uh, I'm on the front line with the computer. So I have access to let people know where the patient is, what room they're in, and also to if anybody's in a clinic or they're going to visit somebody, we can tell them where to go. Um, my newest role is in palliative. I'm on the palliative care unit and um, that particular program, um, the hospital has just started. We were a pilot project and we all did training at Dorothy Lay Hospice and now we're in the hospital. So it sounds like you have, it's almost like you've got different jobs that you can apply for. Or how do you move around into your different roles? Actually, it's, uh, it's very easy in the sense of I allocate two days a week. So um, I no longer am in the gift shop. I'm on the information desk on Tuesdays. And Thursday is my day on palliative. So I'm basically, I'm fine. I can switch both Great. roles. And Ravi, tell me a little bit more about the role that you have. I think you're with the Help Lottery, as I understand it. Yes, I am. Um, we sell lottery tickets outside the gift shop. We have a desk, and people come by and buy tickets. They're a dollar each at the, at the moment. And they have to open them right there and then. And the uh, funds we raise, it goes to the foundation. Oh, that's great. So the help, the help program. Can you explain a little bit about the help program? But it helps the hospital. Ah. get equipment or whatever they want to use the money for and helps me get out of the house and <laughs> spend some time at the hospital which I like a lot. I've been doing it for so many years. And I think too with our uh, help lottery desk, they're right at the front of the hospital so often these uh, people often get asked for information about the hospital and directions mm -hmm. as well so even though their job is to sell lottery tickets they also are a great white wayfinders for us because uh, if they don't get stopping at our information desk, quite often they'll stop Vegas at the help stop, lottery yes. and say, can you tell me where to go to a certain area? So they also have to be well versed in where everything is in the, in the hospital for us as well. Yeah, we so do a lot more than selling, selling tickets. We do a lot of other things. Give people direction and sometimes they need uh, to talk to or something or interact with people, you know. That's amazing. So not only do you volunteer hours where you 
volunteer your time, but you're also helping us raise money. Yes, they do. Which is always needed in our hospital setting. So, Ravi, can you tell me a little bit about why you decided to volunteer? Well, it happened to me in uh, December of 2003. I was close to 60, and I was laid off, and um, I was just looking for work, and I just had trouble getting it. So my daughter used to work at the hospital. She says to me one day, Dad, why don't you start volunteering at the hospital? You always wanted to do that. So I said, okay, I'll think about it. Anyway, she went to the volunteer's office, got the phones for me, because in those days, there was no such thing as an online application. You had to fill them up. So she brought it home. I filled it up. I did all the medical checkups, everything. And she could took it back to the office. And I got a call from Debbie. She said, you want to see you? So I went in there. She talked to me, had an interview. She said, when can you start? It was that simple. And I that was like, more than 10 years ago, she said, Absolutely. you have to commit yourself for four months. Wow. She never asked me to leave, and I never left <laughs> after four months. So you're such an important role in recruiting our volunteers, Deb. Is that difficult or challenging? Uh, we're very blessed at, at uh, Troyum Health Partners in that we have a lot of people interested in helping out at the hospital. Um, we have, I have uh, several staff who help to interview our volunteers and our job is to make sure that after speaking with them through interviews, asking what kind of skills they have, uh, what are their interests, that we try to make the best fit. The best fit for the hospital, but also the best fit for the volunteers as well. So that what they're going to do is going to make them interested and happy and the service that they have and the skills they have are the best fit for that position. It's probably the best part of my job. I love talking with people and interviewing people. You learn so many great things and sharing of their lives. It's, it's just, uh, I actually have the best job in the hospital. There's no doubt about it. So it's a great segue to listen to a voice from our community who's got a question for us. Hi, my name is Tina Pryor and I'd like to know what the process is for becoming a volunteer at Trillium Hospital. Well, this sounds like a great question for you, Deb. Thanks, Tina. I think that uh, what the first thing I would suggest you do is you go online to www.troyumhealthpartners.ca. On the top right-hand corner, you'll see a tab that says Volunteers. Click on that, and that will walk you through how to apply at our hospital. We have two intakes during the year. We actually currently are open right now to October 10th, our intake. Then we have another intake in the spring. And once we get your application, we will ask you to come in for an interview and we'll have a chat with you. There's also a health form that has to be f uh, filled out. There is a couple of health uh, laws that we have to have you have some, some tests prior to coming to the hospital. After you've gone through the interview, if it's a great fit for us and a fit for you, then we will have you come to an orientation that tells you all about the hospital and what, what you can and cannot do as a volunteer and give you some education on our infection control, how to work with wheelchairs, all sorts of areas. From there, we get you to your placement and usually there's some on-site training at that point, usually shadowing a volunteer so that they teach each other the job. That's great, Deb. We have one more question from our community, so let's take a look. I was wondering when you get a volunteer at the hospital, yeah, how do you place yeah. them in their role? That's a great question. How do you place them in their role? Because it sounds like there's many opportunities to volunteer in different places. We have over 100 different placements throughout wow. the hospital. So there is lots of different areas. Uh, we try to break our positions down into three different areas. We have patient direct. So if we know that the person wants to work directly with our patients, there can be many options working on information desk, doing wayfinding, all our clinical areas use volunteers to get the patients set up for their procedure. We also have uh, administrative type of positions. So some people who have some clerical skill often will come in and they just want to help in a clerical position. They're interested in working in a hospital, but maybe not directly with the patients. And that time, usually they're working with the staff. And the third thing, of course, is our fundraising. And we have some people who really just want to come to help raise money for the hospital. So when you come for an interview, we're going to talk to you. We're going to see what your likes and dislikes are. We're going to kind of assess where we think you are a best fit, offer a couple suggestions. And if there's availability in that area, then we'll be able to place you in those areas. Great. So Catherine, can you share with us why you chose to become a volunteer? I decided to resign my position with the school board, and I knew that I had to do something with my life in the sense of um, on a daily basis. So I applied for volunteering and I applied first um, because I had planned to go to Etobicoke because I lived in Etobicoke at the time. Um, but then 
after the amalgamation of the hospitals, I switched over to Trillium. Um, but I really enjoy the volunteering there and I enjoy meeting people and all of the new experiences that I've experienced myself while being at the hospital and I find it extremely rewarding um, to go and it also gives a purpose. You can go you, and you enjoy your time when you're there, made lots of friends yes. um, at the hospital as well. Great. Um, so that was why I, I really did volunteering. So Ravi, have you learned any new skills that you didn't have before? since becoming a volunteer? I think it really helps me a lot because uh, interacting with people, dealing with people, this, and it is a people I just place. love it, I enjoy doing it, and I have learned a lot of skills, how right. to treat people differently, like they might have their different needs and all yes. that. Great, so, thanks. Welcome. Okay, Deb, so let's hear a fast fact. Another fast fact, well, one of the things that Ravi talked about was raising funds for our hospital. Uh, to our Credit Valley gift shop, we actually sell what we call diaper cakes. And they're cakes made up to look like a birthday cake, but they're made out of diapers that people can buy when they have a new baby. So my fact today for that is, is if we made one cake for the 8,805 babies that were born last year at Trillium Health Partners, we would need 545,910 diapers. <laughs> That's a lot of babies. That's that a lot of babies and a lot of diapers. <laughs> I've always said that Trillium Health Partners creates a small city every year with the number of babies that give birth within that hospital. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us today, both thank Catherine you. and Ravi. Welcome. We're going to take a short break um, and continue our stories around volunteering at Trillium Health Partners. Thank you. You both. Welcome back to Talk Trillium, Partnering for Patients. I'm your host, Patty Cochran, and today we've been talking about volunteering across Trillium Health Partners. Joining me now is my co-host, Ray Applebaum. Ray is the CEO of Peel Senior Link, so welcome, Ray. Thanks, Patty. It's great to be here. And we've been talking with Deb Folks, who's the Director of Volunteer Services. And now joining me is Sashin Doshi, one of our other volunteers within our organization. So Ray, you must see great examples of volunteering in our mm -hmm. community. Yeah, as uh, patients come out of hospital and they're coming back to the community uh, and their home, about it. we hear about it and it's really important for us to have that smooth transition. So, uh, Sa Sashin, I guess my first question is related to Patty has been asking about, uh, to our guests, about how they got started in volunteering. So my interest uh, for you is how did you get started as a volunteer at Trillium? Mm -hmm. Uh, there are a couple of reasons why I decided to start volunteering here, and uh, the first reason being my sister, who mm -hmm. was also a volunteer at the hospital. Mm. Just the stories and the experiences that she brought home were, I found them really interesting. I thought that's something I might also be interested in. Mm -hmm. What really pushed me over the edge is just like any other student or kid out there, I really want to give back to the community, and at the same time I also want to enjoy myself. So I found the hospital setting and all that very interesting. And I thought it'd be a great way to sort of give back while getting a first-hand experience at the inside of the hospital and how everything works around there. Sure. How long ago was it you started your volunteer journey? It's about three years ago, mm -hmm. but uh, felt more than double the time. Yes. And what kinds of roles have you played at the hospital over those three years? I've played many different roles. Some of them are in units, some of them deal more with patients and visitors. 
Currently, I'm a youth team leader. Um, we work closely with volunteer resources to kind of manage the program, help develop it, and uh, mentor a small team of youth volunteers. Right. What do you like most about volunteering? Definitely like the uh, interaction with all the people you're going to meet, so there be volunteers, patients, visitors, and uh, sort of seeing where everybody comes from, their stories, and just talking to them. I also really like the ability um, we have to kind of innovate the program and look at it. And Deb, as well as the rest of volunteer resources, are very receptive to that, mm -hmm. those suggestions that we put forth and help us kind of make One it. One of the projects that uh, uh, Sashin has just done is created a database for us that our volunteers can go online and look when there's empty shifts so that they can then phone in and say, I could take that shift over to help out. And um, maybe talk a bit about how you developed that and we've been trialing that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, it was uh, kind of just an idea that I had because we saw that we had lots of empty spots and lots of people who wanted to kind of come in, but there was no connection between. We had a system before, but it wasn't as efficient mm -hmm. as we thought. Putting it online, that's just where everything's going. It's fantastic. So simple way to do that. Well, what a, you, of course, love it. What a great innovation. Into the online yeah. programming. Exactly. So, uh, it was great to have his skills to develop mm -hmm. this database, and we're now going to roll it out to our adults as well. It's been so successful. You mentioned the youth uh, team leader. Can you tell us a little bit about w sort of what your responsibilities are in this role? So um, typical shift, uh, it'll compose of administrative work, and that may be attendance, um, general organization, mm -hmm. kind of looking after the volunteers. Typically we try to go around the hospital maybe once or twice a shift just to visit our volunteers, make sure everything's okay, mm -hmm. uh, make sure they have everything they have or get anything they need. We also like to round on them uh, quarterly or periodically just to make sure that we get their perception of the volunteer program. Mm -hmm. this, has, this helps us develop the program not only so it's better for them but also for all the people that are affected by it. That's great. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Yeah, I will tell you that uh, to be a youth team leader, it really has to be the volunteers who excel in our program. Yes. This is something that I believe they have to have over 100 hours, 150 hours before mm -hmm. they can even apply to be a youth team leader. Yes. And so really we get the cream of the crop. We get um, students who show innovation, who have mm -hmm. good customer service skills, who want to learn and take on some leadership roles. It's great for them. It looks great on resumes when they're applying Absolutely. for school and whatnot. And it's really great for us because they really take on a management role on the weekends and evenings when mm -hmm. our staff aren't there. Mm -hmm. It's a real support role to the hospital. Absolutely. Yeah, it's great. Ray, you know, we've heard before that there are over 100 different roles that volunteers can participate in. And now, Sasha, mm -hmm. and this sounds like you've developed some leadership skills, actually, in being given this role. Mm -hmm. And also the innovation part, which, of course, I love yeah, because the chief exactly. innovation officer. Mm -hmm. So the fact, Deb, that you hear these ideas and you allow people to then, you know, use their creativity and their skills to be able to contribute to a better program. Mm -hmm. and we also try to provide some education for our team leaders. We had a five-tier educational program yes. that we sent them through that was developed like a university course that we offered mm -hmm. for free that talked to them about how to deal with difficult situations, how to talk with people, how to deal with confrontations. Because we expect our youth team leaders to, to be pretty tough on our students if they're mm -hmm. not coming in for shift or not wearing the uniform. And I have to tell you, they're way tougher than we are. Mm -hmm. It's great. They know what to expect. They've done That's it themselves. Great. And they speak with the students if they're doing something wrong or if they're, they're having a problem, they help them to problem solve. Mm -hmm. So it's just been a real win-win situation yeah. for us. I would assume that the other student volunteers would be probably more receptive to you sharing that kind of message than the staff at the hospital. Yeah, and that's exactly just because we're literally the same as they are. Yes. Uh, it's really easy to connect with them and a big part of our job is kind of teaching them their roles or helping, out, helping them out wherever they need. And that involves kind of assessing where their strengths and weaknesses are. But even that only works to a certain point. So it's kind of making like a personal connection. And so they're comfortable coming to you with questions and mm -hmm. like that. I think where their personal connections are, that's where I see it the most. That's fantastic. And you also mentioned that you had fun while you're volunteering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, there's lots of opportunities. and much time and effort we give into the hospital, we get back in knowledge, opportunities, experience. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely uh, can't complain about that. Yeah. And I bet it looks great on a resume. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look. Our community has been asking us questions, so let's take a look and see what they want to ask us. Hi, I'm Faiza. And what skills and qualities are you looking for in a volunteer? 
So Deb, that sounds like a perfect question for sure. you. Mm -hmm. Faisa, thank you for your question. Well, it really depends on the different portfolios that we're putting you in, but we're looking at someone who has great customer service skills, who likes to work with patients. We look at your accountability and that you're going to be able to come every day for your, every week for mm -hmm. your shift. This is, we want people to treat it like a job. We expect you to be coming weekly because when volunteers aren't here, means the staff have to take over to mm -hmm. do those jobs. So it's very, very important to have the volunteers here. We look at some of the skills, special skills that a volunteer may have, if we have a specific job, um, if they have a specific interest, and we try to look at where the best fit those people would go. And at the time, do we have an opening that we can put them in? Mm -hmm. So Deb, Maybe this is a little bit embarrassing, but what skills did you see in Sasha? Um, <laughs> why did you decide that he would make a great team leader? What did you see in him? Well, I mean, Sasha's one of our top volunteers, obviously, and uh, he, he's, uh, he's just a great person. I think his uh, accountability, he's been coming for three years, as he said. Mm -hmm. Sashin has donated over 570 hours to the mm. hospital, which is tremendous when you think wow. you're only coming three hours mm -hmm. a week. So he's done more than once a week. So the dedication is really important. We also look at how they interact with people. Uh, Sashin's great at that, has great interaction skills, very friendly. People find him very easy to talk to. Yet in tough situations, we've seen that he's been able to use his problem solving skills and where needed, he can be tough. And I understand, Sashin, you're going to university now? Yeah, I'm going to second year now. And so it means that you have to travel from university back home in order to volunteer. Yeah, and uh, I do that every other week. You know what, I enjoy volunteering and it also brings me back every other week. So I can't complain, my parents are happy and... <laughs> oh, they must be so proud yeah. of you and your sister. Mm -hmm. That's great. So in addition to the skills that Deb has mentioned, uh, that you use in your personal life as well, are there others that you can highlight that you've been able to use in your life? Well, um, volunteering is kind of in part of my personal development, even in high school, which were really important years. So it's hard to say exactly where it's shaped me, mm -hmm. but uh, I know it's played a big role in general. Mm -hmm. I know that in all the positions I've held, the leadership, especially interpersonal communication, that's mm -hmm. um, a really big part just because everybody's so different and you kind of have to recognize how people are. So definitely communication and leadership skills have rolled out into many aspects of my life. And just following that through, in terms of the volunteerism and the skills, the life skills that you've picked up, how has that shaped your future, just at this point in time, from your perspective? Um, ever since volunteering at the hospital, it's definitely changed um, not only what I want to do, but how I want to do it when I grow up. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of the idea of the journey, I guess that's mm -hmm. a cliche, mm -hmm. thing, but it's, it's definitely more the journey than just mm -hmm. the destination. And being in the hospital, seeing how you know, a small deed can make such a big difference to someone else. That's right. Excellent. So just before we close up, Deb, how do you thank these volunteers who give so generously of their time? Well, we do have a lot of uh, social events. They're more for our adults and our seniors because they do like to get out and meet people. So two or three times a year we have social events for them. Uh, there's a National Volunteer Week, which is usually in April, and mm -hmm. we do a lot of our thanks then. We have a big event at the uh, Living Arts Centre that all our senior management team comes out to thank our volunteers. But to be honest with you, it's a day-to-day. -day. It's having the staff and having the department just say thank you when they come in. And most of the volunteers, when you ask them what they want, they want people to know their name. And you'll know that you'll see in a lot of the uniforms now, we have people's first names. And that was a suggestion by one of our volunteers. Mm. Because now staff, when they see volunteers every week, it may be a different person, so they forget their name. So now they can look down, see the mm -hmm. name, call the volunteer by name, and often get them to do more things because they know their name. So mm -hmm. saying thank you mm -hmm. and just appreciating them is probably the biggest thing that they like to have. So Ray and I also heard quickly that Sash and uh, you got a scholarship. Mm -hmm. So is, is that another way that we thank? Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got the scholarship last year at the hospital, and this year there's actually been uh, five scholarships given out to just youth volunteers. I think that's an excellent way, you know, funding education, again, continuing mm. the gift of knowledge. That yeah. we Our volunteer that's board sponsors five uh, scholarships a year that we give that people can apply, mm -hmm. and we look at what they're doing in the hospital, what they've learned, and what they contribute. Great. Mm. So just before we close, one fast fact. Dan. I have my final fast fact. 
And it's a really important one because our longest serving volunteers started volunteering at the Queensway Health Centre in 1955, which means she has been volunteering for 59 years. Utterly amazing. She still volunteers today. She's in our finance and uh, she works on our patient information desk. And you'd think she'd have enough of us by now, but she just loves what she does and continues to come weekly and we're blessed to have her. That's just an incredible story. I want to thank each and every one of you for telling us this and and, and for giving so generously to the organization. We so appreciate it. And thank you on behalf of all of our patients. And uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, join us next time. I'm Patty Cochran from Trillium Health Partners, and we'll be back again another episode. Thank you. <laughs>